All right, let's go over the Go Formative practice assessment for Unit 6, Learning Targets 1 through 4. I'm going to go through it on the PDF, but you should be doing it at GoFormative.com after you log in. Uh, first question, choose the term that best completes the second relationship. Volume is to liter as concentration is to, well, the units for um, volume are liters and the units for concentration is molarity. So it should be molarity. To 1,000 milliliters of ethanol, you add 0.5 grams of sodium iodide, which is correct. Well, the sodium iodide is the solute, if you're adding it, to dissolve in the solvent, and you get a solution. But it should be the sodium iodide is the solute and the ethanol is the solvent. If you have Cheerios and milk, this will be heterogeneous because it's not the same throughout. It's not like salt water where it's all mixed in. What is the molarity of a solution if five moles of solute are dissolved in 20,000 milliliters? Well, molarity is moles divided by liters. And I want to get milliliters into liters here. So I'm going to divide by 1,000. So it's 20 liters. So we've got 5 moles divided by 20 liters. That's the same as 0.25 moles per liter. How many grams of potassium hydroxide do you need to add to a 300 milliliter volumetric flask in order to make a 0.4 molar solution? Okay, well, liters times molarity will give us moles. So I have to divide 300 by 1,000. That's 0.3 liters times 0.4 molar. That comes out to be 0 0.12 moles of KOH. Make sure I've got this right here. 0.3 times 0.4, yes, okay? And then I wanna get this into grams because it's not very useful to have moles. So one mole of KOH weighs how much? We have to go to the periodic table and add this up. K is 39.098. O is 16. And oxygen is 1.008. So that's K and O and H. Answer, 56.106. So times by 56.106 grams of KOH. That's how much one mole weighs. We only need 0.12 of a mole. So I multiply and that comes out to be 6.7 grams of KOH. How many milliliters of an 18 molar stock solution should you add to your 500 milliliter volumetric flask before diluting with water? You want to make 500 milliliters of a 1.5 molar solution. So we need the dilution equation. M1 is our stock. V1 is what we are solving for. M2 is the molarity we want and V2 is how much of it we want. And then to get V1 by itself, I'm gonna divide both sides by 18 molar. So let's see, V1 equals 1.5 times 500 divided by 18, 41.7 about, there it is, 41.67 milliliters of stock. Okay. During a lab to investigate reaction rate, a student reacts one gram samples of solid zinc with 10 milliliter samples of HCl. The table shows the variables in five experiments that the student performed. So let's see. They sometimes used lumps of zinc, sometimes powder. 
We sometimes used 0.1 molar HCl and sometimes one molar. We sometimes used a colder temperature and a medium temperature and a hotter temperature. Which experiment number would happen the fastest? Well, between lumps and powder, powder happens the fastest because it has a higher surface area. So it's gonna be more likely to collide with the other reactant. For concentration, the higher concentration is gonna go faster because there's a higher chance that one of the solutes, since there's more solute per liter, will collide with the other reactant. And then temperature. The higher temperature means the molecules would be moving faster and have an increased chance of colliding with the other reactant. So does one of these have all three? Yes, experiment six. In the experiment mentioned in question number seven, suppose you keep everything constant besides concentration. Why would the zinc react faster with one molar HCl versus 0.1 molar HCl. Well, I'll type off to the side here. A 1.0 molar concentration of HCl means there are more HCl molecules dissolved in the water per liter. This means there is a greater chance that an HCl molecule will collide with the zinc and um, have and react. Oops, so that way. Therefore, the higher concentration of a reactant will result in a faster reaction rate. True or false, when a reaction has reached chemical equilibrium, the forward and reverse reactions take place at the same rate. True, that's the definition of a chemical equilibrium. Consider the reversible reaction below. If hydrogen gas is removed, which is true, it's going to shift to the right because it wants to compensate. It's like, oh no, we got to make more H2. So the forward reaction will increase. For the reaction above, Le Chatelier's principle predicts that blank will result in an increase in the number of moles of SO3 in the reaction container. So what would increase the SO3? Increasing the pressure, yes, because there's two gases on the left and only one on the right. So that means that it would shift right. Decreasing the pressure would do the opposite. It would shift it to the left. Because remember, when you increase pressure, you're going to increase the number of collisions. So the side that has more gases is going to be more affected. Increasing the temperature would also cause it to shift left and have a lower number of moles of SO3. And removing oxygen would also cause it to shift left. So the only one that causes it to shift right and produce more SO3 is increasing the pressure. And that's it.